Okay, so uh, welcome. And what we're going to be learning inside of this section is we're going to be learning uh, back substitution for linear congruences. Okay, and so what this is, is this is a way of solving systems of linear congruences. And it's different from our work with the Chinese remainder theorem that we utilize this, you know, in case working with the Chinese remainder theorem might be a little bit too difficult, right? Um, and so oftentimes this one is ends up being fairly straightforward. It still takes some requirement of understanding number theory, but it's not as, let's say, opaque as the Chinese remainder theorem. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with this first one. We're going to start out, right, with x is congruent to 3 mod 5. Okay? And what that means, if we write, rewrite it in terms of the division algorithm, that's going to be x equals 5 times some number t plus 3. Right? Because that's what it means to be 3 modulo 5. It's some multiple of uh, 5 plus 3. Then what we're going to do is we're going to notice that x and x, we've got two x's here. So I'm going to substitute in. I'm going to take 5t plus 3, and that's going to be congruent then to 4 modulo 7. Okay? Now all I need to do is actually solve this particular modulus. I'll subtract 3, and that gives me 5t is going to be equivalent to 1 modulo 7. And then what I'm going to need is I'm going to need the inverse of 5 modulo 7. So the inverse of 5 modulo 7 equals 3, or is 3. So we'll multiply both sides by 3. This will give me 3 times 5t is going to be equivalent to 3 times 1 modulo 7. Okay? And so consequently, this means because we found the inverse, that's going to give me back t, or just 1t, and that'll be equivalent to 3 mod 7. And that's the, our first answer. So that's what t is going to be equivalent to. So now what we have is we have t is going to be equivalent to 3 mod 7. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize the division algorithm again in order to write t in terms of another variable, another dummy variable. Let's call it u. Okay, so let's let t then is going to equal 7u plus 3. Okay, and when I then I'm going to substitute that back in for x. So x will then equal 5 times 7u plus 3 plus 3. Okay, so all I've done is I've substituted t for u. Okay, and this will equal 35u plus 15 plus 3, which equals 35u plus 18. So that's what x is now. So now I'm going to substitute this in for the x in my next uh, my next uh, congruence. So x, excuse me, so 35u plus 18 is going to be equivalent to 7 mod 11. Now, just like in the last occurrence, what we're going to do is now solve this linear congruence. So we'll subtract 18 from both sides. And what I get is 35u is congruent to negative 11 mod 11. Well, this is interesting because it turns out, okay, that negative 11, huh, that's, that's 0 mod 11. So that means that 35u is congruent to 0 mod 11. Okay? And so u is equal to 0 mod 11. Or u is congruent to 0 mod 11. What this means, then, is that u equals 11 times some variable w. And now that's the final thing that we're going to need in order to solve this equation. We've got u equals 11w, right, plus 0, but it's just 11w. Okay? So now I have that u equals 11w, and x equals 35u plus 18. So since that's the case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to substitute in, right? Substitute for, substitute u in. And what that gives me is that x equals 35 times 11w plus 18. Okay? And that means that x is equal to 385w plus 18. Okay? What that means then is that x is then equivalent to 18 mod 385. Because that's the division algorithm. So that, this, 
is the solution. Or actually, we should state that x equals 18. x equals 18 is our real solution here. Okay? And what we can do is we can actually plug that back into our congruences and see if we end up with the correct answer. So we'll take x is congruent to 3 mod 5. x is congruent to 4 mod 7. The x is congruent to 7 mod 11. So we take 18. Is 18 congruent to 3 mod 5? Well, yeah, it is. Because 18 equals 5 times 3 plus 3. Okay? How about is 18 congruent to 4 mod 7? Well, yeah, it is. Because 18 equals 2 times 7 plus 4. Or maybe we should put, yeah, 2 times 7 plus 4. Good. And then is 18 congruent to 7 mod 11? Well, yeah, it is. Because 18 equals 11 times 1 plus 7. Check, check, check. So x equals 18 is the solution. All right. So. This is a step-by-step -step process. It's one of those things that you're probably not going to synopsize very well. Um, what you can do or what I re would recommend is you go back in and maybe either watch it a couple times, making sure that you understand what it is that you need to do with back substitution. Um, but then also that as you're going through and doing your problems, you might want to watch along, right? See if you can kind of like recreate the steps, that kind of thing. It's very alg much algorithm-based, all right? Again, it's number theory, so that they're kind of, kind of uh, very similar along those lines. If at any one of the steps you have any problems like finding the inverse, rewriting it in terms of the division algorithm, let me know, right? Or that might be one of those things where you need to be like, hey, I don't get how we find the inverse, right? I don't understand how it is that we're writing it as division algorithm. You should let me know that too, okay? Because that's one of the basic areas where this is very different from algebra. All right, so this completes the lecture. Um, yeah, there we go.